So, some of you who've seen me at shows and at PyCon may have seen this before. Uh, it's been briefly shown, I think, when I toured my lab, um, and this is Armbot. Here, I'll show where I've done an interview uh, with someone about what this device does. Um, but uh, I'll first give a brief overview and how I'm planning to give this a bunch of upgrades. Okay, so a bit of history. Uh, this robot was built in around 2009, um, but it's had major upgrades since. So it started off life uh, as an Arduino controlled robot using the RD01 kit. Uh, the MD, there's an MD25 motor control board. There are motors with wheels and the motors have encoders on them. Oh, everything's falling off. Um, and it's been partially prepared for this upgrade. So then that thing was able to run around with the Arduino. So you'd kind of give the Arduino some code, unplug it, press play and off it would go and it would drive. Um, at some point I decided, well, I wanted to have a bit more fun and I mounted an EPC on it. So it became the eBot, which uh, EPC is a little laptop from around about that era, 2009. Rolled on a little bit later and the Raspberry Pi arrived and I fitted this robot with Raspberry Pi. So it had a little bit more power to it. Um, and there was a Kickstarter for a robot arm, uh, the, the micro arm, the U arm, which came from, I think, U factory. And uh, I had this with me at a PyCon, and I had this robot base, what was the old eBot with me at a PyCon. And I had a moment of, what if? And so I put some holes in the base and figured out, well, I could bolt this arm to this robot base. And lo and behold, I did control. Uh, so this is a, a Arduino based robot arm with uh, the servos. The servos have also got um, active feedback or variable resistors in them that you can go and read back from this Arduino. So I wired this in, plugged the Arduino into the Pi. The Pi was using I2C to drive the MD25, um, USB for this, and it has Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth. There's another PyCon coming, and I have a whole bunch of upgrades planned. So what upgrades have I got? Okay, so the first thing I think I want to do is on here currently is a Raspberry Pi model B+. Um, we've had a Raspberry Pi 2 and a Raspberry Pi 3. And I've been doing some stuff with OpenCV, computer vision uh, on a laptop, but I like to be able to actually translate it and have this do some kind of OpenCV magic, some kind of face tracking, object tracking. You know, the ultimate, I mean, for me, would be able to get this so this... Uh, arm can start going and grabbing something so it can navigate and find things. So I've already unplugged the I2C connections um, and I'm already aware that the cabling isn't great so there'll probably be a cabling upgrade. So, but the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take away this Pi and replace it with a Raspberry Pi 3. So uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 online and it also means it's going to be a little bit lighter weight because uh, I don't need separate Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. And it's also just gruntier. It's a power, more powerful setup, so I should be able to do more with it. Um, and I've got a whole list of upgrades. Like I might see if I can get a second camera and then do something stereoscopic, but piece at a time. So for this part, let's get this Pi on board. So, with this Pi, I'm also going to put this, this case in, uh, which is a Lego-like case. Now, I've got actually a, a Pi Maroni Ninja case coming, um, but this one will do for today. Um, I'd actually rather reserve this to put into a Lego box, so let's just pop that in the case. And this is all fairly painless because the case has got, uh, it's got clips, um, and I'll make sure in the link below, I'll show you where you can get this case. So it's got Lego studs or Lego plates below, Lego studs at the top, so it's Lego compatible. And it's got holes for all of the major Pi parts. It's 
It's got uh, an area for you to put the camera through or even put the camera mounting under. Um, and I think there are enough gaps maybe to get uh, some of the uh, GPIO wired out from it. I'll find out with this. Um, and again, this is temporarily on this robot because later this robot will get the, uh, I think the Ninja case is laser cut, which fits with the style of the arm here. So for now, anyway, I'll mount this Pi 3 and uh, I think it just clips in, so there's no screws required. Um, it looks like once it's clipped in, might be, there might be a bit of a trick on taking it out, but for today, because I just want to see if I can get it all together, I'll uh, clip this Pi 3 in there. Oh, I see. Well, it's nice not to require a screwdriver for this, although eventually I'm sure we'll need a screwdriver for something. That fits quite nice and flush in there, so it clips right down. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do... So the case I had before was the Smarty Pi, and I'm going to lift the camera from there. Now, the Pi I had inside the Smarty Pi had a real-time clock module on it, and I think now I've got a Pi with an onboard Wi-Fi, for this particular project, that's of a little bit more limited use than it was. Ooh, if I can get that out of that hole, well, that's a bit of a tricky thing. Yeesh. <laughs> looks like I will need a screwdriver, so that looks like it's wedged in that hole there. Okay, that's a bit of a nightmare. But yes, this is also a uh, Lego style connector for the camera which for now I may use. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I could clip it in there. A couple of other interesting facts about this thing. So there's two power supplies on board currently. Uh, one is eight AA batteries, which is designed to run all the motors. The other is a power walker, which is like a, a big uh, phone charger battery, which I use for the logic. Now at some point I may try to use one of these battery eliminator circuits. It's also got a big old switch with a chop block in the corner, which I just bought from a local hardware store when I originally built it. And the actual chassis um, is it's, it's a material that actually just turned up. I mean, I was, um, I was kind of starting to put together the RDO1 kit. I'd gone out for a walk on the hills and uh, thinking, well, what can I use for a chassis? And as I was walking over the hills, oh, I shall pop out these uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I stumbled upon a piece of flat board. I mean, it's um, it's kind of like a dense foam board, so it's very, very machinable. It's ever so slightly wobbly, um, and it was just there in the snow, so it was a snowy day, and I went, well, that's perfect, you know, it, um, took it home, basically sanded off the sharp corners, uh, drilled a hole in the thing, um, you know, to start putting the motors through, and it was the ideal thing. I mean, literally out of the blue, right in front of me on my uh, on a walk out up in up the hill. There it was, the perfect chassis. <coughs> um, and uh, I've stuck with it since. Now I may, because the arm is a little bit heavy, go and stick something to brace it for a bit more rigidity at some point. Um, you know, there's no urgency on that, but uh, it'd be nice to make it more rigid. Um, and one of this robot's major flaws, um, one of which is the uh, the number of cables going between the arm and the other bits, when the arm obviously has to be able to move, um, and I'm going to look to address that. Um, but the other major flaw is it's very tough to move it. So if I want to take this robot and uh, bring it to you know to uh, conferences and shows. Like most, I suppose, most of these robots I've got here, it, it's a bit rickety. It needs a screwdriver to fix it again after such a move. Um, and I've started thinking about that. First is kind of making it so there are nice, clear parts where you can assemble, disassemble, so there's certain modularity to it. Um, second is having a kind of a single connector cable bundle um, for all the different cables, which I can maybe perhaps replace as I go for upgrades and you know, need more connectors. Um, and maybe just uh, even some housing, some kind of fairings around the uh, the arm and around the other parts of the robot, just to make it a little bit less vulnerable to, to damage, you know, so it's a bit easier to throw into a, a suitcase or flight case. Again, in terms of its envelope, it, it, it's got a, it's 
quite a big box envelope, so you're not going to really get that in a standard bit of luggage. Um, and what I have taken to doing um, to move robots like this that are slightly uh, yeah, sensitive is, well, when I'm traveling, I'll be traveling with a suitcase full of gear and full of clothes, and I might actually try and use some of my T-shirts and things to bundle it in to stop it rattling around and getting bashed up. Right, okay, we now have this camera off. So I've got a bit of a decision to make today on whether I leave the camera in its uh, little lego -y case and just stick it on, or whether I mount it under that convenient looking hole for mounting a camera. For today, I think I'm gonna mount it on the top. Again, because this is, this is an intermediate case. I'm gonna leave that one in that case and that can be used with some other Lego um, at some point. So we'll let, let that be. So yes, the uh, Smarty Pie, very heavy, very dense. There's uh, some metal bits and a GoPro mate compared with this one, which I think is the Pie Blocks case. So the Pie Blocks case, and I'll link to below, feels far lighter, far easier to, to hold and to, to mount on things. Okay, but what I will also take from this other pie is the micro SD, which uh, I may need to do some things to, but it has got the code for this, uh, this robot on it. And when I say the code for this robot, the stuff is actually, um, it's all being stored elsewhere as well. This isn't the only copy. It's, um, it's all in Git somewhere, because I'm a bit of a fan, anyone will tell you, of uh, source control everything. Okay, that's fine. Right, so we'll um, just thread this through. And pop it in the camera slot. And this is a fiddly bit, just uh, popping the camera in here. Now, unlike the original B+, on the Raspberry Pi 3, the... Um, this connector seems to be dangling a lot more than it was. So let's just pop that in, or the uh, clip for the connector. And we'll um, pop that down there. Okay, and there is a space for the uh, GPIO. Now oh, that's frustrating. I can feel where the uh, camera has gone in doesn't completely line up with the case there. It's placing a little bit of sideways force on that camera connector, which I'm not sure I like. Now, if I loop it a little bit underneath, then I'll give myself a little bit of slack to work with there. And it's snap fit. I'm sure I can pull it back out when I need to put those GPIO pins in. Okay, so that initially is a Pi 3, which I'll pop on here, um, and we'll put the uh, Smarty Pi, and we'll leave actually, as now we put, put it right together, I'll leave these in there, so yes, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for some next robot that I shall build and add that onto, or next project. Okay, and that'll need to face that way. Now, what I really want to do with this depending on the size of the case and so on. Just perhaps mount the Pi here and have the camera there, um, which probably means getting away from this case that we've got here and going with something a bit more simple and um, uh, laser cut so I can comfortably drill lots of holes in it because I don't really want to deface this lovely Lego one, which I can use with some Lego robot. I've got plenty of those. Um, mount it on here and I can have the camera basically somewhere not far from the arm, so it all rotates with the arm. Um, and that means that then the cabling would need to come with the arm down. Now, there's going to be perhaps only power, which, uh, okay, power comes in that side, and the arm's own USB, so... But the next thing really, before I go any further, is what to do with these cables. So I think before we get into the next video, I'm going to be looking at, there's two power cables uh, for the arm, 
There's four I2C cables going from the MD25 control board to the Pi. There is a power board going to the Pi, and the arm has a USB cable going to the Pi. Now, if we are definitely going to, one way or another, mount the Pi on the arm, then even if the temporary thing is I just glue it on the back or tape it to the back here, then I can at least say, well, there is a single cable bundle going up to the Pi and arm. Um, and again, maybe temporarily, actually, I want to mount it here. So then when I can mount the camera properly, it'll be mounted forward looking. So let me think, what can I use to mount that? Um, probably double-sided tape. Temporary but strong enough. Temporary until I can actually may perhaps come up with the actual bracket and that may be 3D printed. I, I haven't had much use for the 3D printer with ARMBOT yet. This might be an ideal thing to do is to 3D print a bracket to actually hold the Pi or the Pi and the camera in the right position. Perhaps a commando strip, 3M commando strips, which are the Velcro with the pull-away tabs or even just a double-sided tape style pull-away commando stuff. And I can glue that in place and then I can start estimating cable length for power and for other things to get up to here so I can have a bundle that has power for the Pi, power for the uh, robot and Pi control for the MD25. I'm going to sit and do a bit of planning and work out what I'm going to do with that. Um, watch this space and I'll come back and we'll um, look at perhaps building that power cable and um, with the uh, Pi mount in the right place. Until next time, good night.